Can you imagine how crazy your life would be if you were an Arab prince? How free would you be with all that money? The kind of things you would buy and the places you would go? Well, Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud has never had to imagine. He was born an Arab prince, and today, he is king of one of the world's richest countries and the head of the world's richest monarchy. And trust me when I say this, nothing can prepare you for how lavishly this king spends his wealth. The House of Saud now, before we dive into King Salman's trillionaire lifestyle, it's important to know where those trillions come from. King Salman came into power at the age of 79 in 2015, after his older brother, Abdullah, who was king at the time, passed away. As king, Salman took control of the House of Saud, the throne of Saudi Arabia, and the state-owned oil company, Aramco, where a majority of the family's wealth comes from. Now, Aramco happens to be the second largest reserve for crude oil in the world. And at the point of making this video, the royal family controls 98% of it. This has made the House of Saud incredibly wealthy, with a net worth of $1.4 trillion. This inexhaustible wealth is shared amongst 2,000 members of the royal family, but all of it is directly controlled by King Salman himself. With this incredible wealth, the House of Saud has built 12 incredibly magnificent palaces for whoever sits on the throne. And out of those 12, the three most luxurious are the Al Yamama Palace in Riyadh, the Al Alja Palace in Ad Dureya, and the luxurious Urga Palace, the Al Yamama Palace. The effortlessly magnificent Al Yamama Palace is the headquarters of King Salman bin Abdulaziz, and it is in the heart of Riyadh, the Saudi capital city. It serves the monarch as both a working palace and the royal court. The exterior of the palace is effortlessly modern and elegant, with a traditional Arabic design that seamlessly integrates geometric motifs and pointed arched windows. However, it is the interiors that truly reveal King Salman's lavish taste. There are several magnificent chandeliers that could serve as their own art piece. Lush carpets, ornate antiques, and gold. Lots and lots of gold. It's incredibly difficult to generate an estimate for this palace, but if I was gonna guess, it would be in the hundreds of millions. On the flip side, whenever King Salman gets tired of this palace's opulence, he has been known to move to the older and more minimalistic al Auja Palace. The al Auja Palace. This palace is far less modern and features the old architecture of Saudi Arabia. However, like the Al Yamama court, its walls are also decorated with intricate carvings and feature black and white photos of Riyadh. However, unlike Al Yamama, there isn't as much gold. But don't be fooled. The palace is one of the oldest palaces on Earth, and it is therefore priceless. However, if you are looking for another golden palace, then the Urga Palace is a gentle reminder that King Salman has more than enough money to create endless copies of Al Yamama's opulence as his majesty pleases. The Urga Palace Urga Palace is where most of the king's diplomatic visits are received. Back in 2015, a newly crowned King Salman received Barack Obama in the palace. And can you see what's right in the middle of them? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's a golden tissue dispenser. I told you, King Salman doesn't mess around with his gold. So if tissue dispensers can't escape the gold treatment, you can imagine what else in the palace is covered in gold. But wait, don't be too impressed yet. Because it's one thing to have a golden palace. But it's a whole other affair to deck a fleet of jets in the same precious metal. The Many Jet Planes of King Salman King Salman owns and operates six jets. Yes, six. Besides his incredibly grand official 747-400, the Saudi royal also owns two Boeing 747-200s, a 777-300, a 787-8, and an Airbus A340-200 that serves the king exclusively. The Royal Boeing 747-400 is a commercial airliner that was customized for the king and transformed into a levitating
devastating palatial paradise. This aviation beast is one of the largest passenger aircraft in the world and capable of accommodating more than 600 passengers. There's no official video of the interiors for obvious security reasons, but it is rumored to feature everything from a throne room to conference rooms, bathrooms, and gold-clad bedrooms. The average cost of a Boeing that size is $100 million. However, since King Salman has two, I invite you to do the math. But wait, remember, they are all custom designed and they are graced with golden interiors. And also remember that his remaining four planes share similar features. I can't tell you how much all six jets would cost to maintain, but I'll be surprised if the total cost was anything less than $3 billion annually. And yet that's just a drop in the ocean for the king, because what he spends on his diplomatic trips will make your jaws drop. The Trip to Washington in 2014, when the king traveled to Washington, D.C. on a diplomatic trip, he booked the entire 222 rooms of the luxurious Four Seasons Hotel. Then, in true Salmon fashion, the king ordered a complete redecoration of the hotel. They were ordered to turn everything that wasn't gold to, well, gold. The tables, mirrors, lamps, even the hat racks had to be changed. And all of these golden items were shipped directly from Saudi Arabia on airplanes. There are some things that aren't worth costing because of how mind-boggling they are, and this is one of them. The king also ordered for all the carpets in the hotel to be changed to red, and arrangements were made for carpets to be laid in the lower parking garage so that the king would not have to touch the bare ground. The 2017 Trip to Russia now, if you think the 2014 trip was excessive, eh, then you might want to lean back for this one. In 2017, King Salman went on a series of diplomatic trips from Russia to Indonesia, Morocco, Tokyo, and a couple of other countries. Every trip was a show of luxurious extravagance, and quite predictably, gobsmacking amounts of money was spent. On the king's trip to Russia, he brought with him an entourage of 1,500 people, 1,764 pounds of food, his own furniture and his own carpets. However, the main star of the show was King Salman's golden escalator that he used to disembark his plane. See, regular escalators cost around $8,000 per foot plus maintenance, so you can imagine how much a golden escalator would cost. But since gold is not a proper metal for mechanical moving parts, the royal device got stuck halfway through His Majesty's descent, and he was forced to climb down like the rest of us. In Russia, the king also booked out the Ritz-Carlton and the Four Seasons Hotels. Both hotels were occupied by the king's 1,000-plus entourage, and to make this possible, these luxurious hotels were forced to cancel other guests' reservations and temporarily move out residents who lived there permanently. All of these bookings cost King Salman about $3 million before room service, a ridiculously small amount for the king. King Salman also leased 200 cars for his group and ended up spending an estimated $100 million in Russia by the end of his stay. In Morocco, the king replicated his spendings. He shelled out $100 million on one of the most expensive accommodations in the country, an undisclosed 74-acre estate. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad occupied 800 rooms in one of Morocco's most expensive hotels. Yeah, they booked out the entire hotel. Trip to Tokyo while preparing for their trip to Tokyo, King Salman realized there was going to be a luggage problem. So the king chartered a $14 million Lockheed C-130 Hercules plane that belonged to the Royal Netherlands Air Force. This military aircraft was originally designed to transport tanks and other heavy cargo over long distances, but the king repurposed it to carry his luggage and two Mercedes-Benz S-600s that served as his official vehicles throughout his stay in Tokyo. Then he booked over 1,200 rooms in Tokyo's top hotels to accommodate his squad, and ordered an additional 500 limos for everyone to get around. Later, in France, the king would repeat the same routine. The trip to Indonesia 
By the time the king would land in Indonesia later that year, 506 tons of his personal cargo were once again arranged and transported into Indonesia in seven large transport aircrafts, including the C-130 Hercules and the Boeing 747S. This time, King Salman was accompanied by 100 bodyguards that cost up to $3,500 per hour. He also had 25 princes and 10 ministers with him, and at least 1,500 other people. The net worth of the individuals in his entourage alone was in the tens of billions of dollars, and they all arrived ahead of the king on 36 flights over a period of three weeks. Unsurprisingly, like every other country he had visited, the king had very specific, luxurious demands. Most notably, he requested for a custom toilet to be built for him inside a mosque he was visiting, and I'm guessing it was covered in gold. In fact, the stress of his demands was so intense that it reportedly took the air freight company in charge of his transportation about 572 workers to handle his cargo alone. At this point, you might be wondering why King Salman has to travel with so many people, and the answer is more obvious than you imagine. On one hand, the king has specific needs, and at least 150 members of his 1500 entourage are his personal professional chefs who are tasked with cooking specific delicacies for him. His servants are also part of that entourage, and the Saudi princes that tag along have their own servants on the entourage list. In fact, they are known to replace the staff of the hotels the king books with their own servants. And unsurprisingly, the king's love for gold, convenience, and luxury has not gone unnoticed by members of the family who have tried to turn a profit on the king himself. The most expensive example involved Prince Al-Walid bin Talal a nephew of King Salman. He placed an order to transform the world's largest and most spacious airliner, the Airbus A380 Super Jumbo, into a luxury private plane. The project, which was estimated to cost upwards of $485 million, was expected to set a world record in the business of luxury private planes. There were plans for wide staircases and elevators that would connect five luxury suites. There was going to be a concert hall, a marble-furnished Turkish bath, a steam room, a cinema, parking space for luxury cars, and a mosque that would feature electronic mats that automatically turn to face Mecca. You would practically enter the plane and forget that you were in a plane. That was the plan, and the prince planned to resell the plane to King Salman once he was done, for a higher price, of course. However, it never came to fruition. The project stalled and eventually came to a screeching halt. Today, there is an abandoned A380 sitting in a hangar in France with its interior ripped out, wasting away, a testament to the unending wealth of the House of Saud and its luxury-loving king.